What's happening guys? This is the Grand Master of Faster and welcome back to Let's Play Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. In the last episode, we completed story mode in all six episodes, so that means we're done, right? No, not by a long shot. You see, there are some mini kits and power bricks that we still haven't collected yet. But before we get started, I'm going to head on over to the shop because I bought some characters and extras off screen. Uh, and I also uh, purchased all 14 gold bricks. And as you can see, it completely drained my bank account. And keep in mind, I was well over 3 million studs when I finished story mode. And uh, that's the primary reason why you don't want to waste your money after each by going over to the cantina after each and every chapter you finish. Uh, and I'm going to s actually uh, turn on one of those extras. In order to uh, turn on an extra, you have to first purchase it, go to extras, and um, and uh, going through this menu. Uh, I'm actually going to turn on the exploding blaster bolts. This will uh, give blaster bolts the power to explode. Thus, they will have the ability to, to destroy shiny objects. Once again, we are going to start with the Phantom Menace. Now, because I don't have to go through all of the chapters again in their entirety, this video is probably going to uh, go a lot quicker. As such, I think I will um, dedicate two chapters to a video. So let's start off with negotiations. We have three mini kit pieces and we have a power brick that needs collecting. Now when you play free play, uh, you can choose any character that you have collected throughout your adventure. And what's cool is that you can play as characters that didn't appear in that respective episode. So, in free play mode, you can press the side buttons to toggle back and forth between characters you've collected. Typically, you'll need a certain number of characters with certain abilities. You'll need a Jedi, a blaster character, an astromech droid, a protocol droid, uh, you'll also need a bounty hunter to, to destroy any uh, shiny objects that you may come across. Uh, you'll need a dark side character in case you encounter any black Lego objects. And last but not least, you will need a stormtrooper character. Also a high jumper like this Grievous bodyguard here. So when you stand on both of these switches, the, bla the battle droids attack and you can destroy them and collect the next mini kit piece. Now obviously your mini kit count might be a little bit different than mine, but uh, if you are having trouble finding a specific mini kit piece, there are various guides on YouTube that are incredibly helpful. All right, so we're going to build this robotic arm and we're going to have Obi-Wan Kenobi jump while the other Obi-Wan... Actually, no, I have to activate this robotic arm myself because the other character is too darn lazy. Cool, we are rewarded with some uh, extra studs and we're going to need some extra studs uh, in order to uh, purchase the characters that have yet to be bought. So if you thought we were done collecting shinies, oh my no. All right, uh, by the way, if you fulfill any requirement that uh, would otherwise have a mini kit piece appear, they will, uh, th there will instead be a blue stud that appears in its place. So let's go ahead and get 3PO to open this door where we access another room. Typically mini kit pieces are in rooms that are inaccessible in story mode. So if there's a panel that you couldn't unlock or an obstacle that you couldn't get through, there's a pretty good chance there is a collectible hiding somewhere in there. So we need to switch to Wicket and uh, climb up to the top to deactivate the energy wall because on the other side, there is yet another mini kit piece. Now next we need to switch to R2 and fly all the way over here and, oh, whoa, 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 can we actually get there? 
No, we cannot. So I will have to use Darth Maul instead to collect the next mini kit piece. Now, if memory serves, there is one more extra room that is somewhere in here, and I believe it's this one right over here, and this time we need R2's help to open it. And in this room, we have kind of an interesting one. This area is littered with studs. And take a look, now that we have the score times two active, we're already at 30,000 studs. That's pretty darn cool if I do say so myself. All right, so the first thing we need to do is hop on this trolley and ha and then we need to switch to a high jumper and have a force user transport us there. And up we go to get the seventh mini kit piece. All right, now this hatch conceals a passageway and also a crap ton of studs. Very nice. Oh, 35,000. Thousand. We're making really good progress on studs. Of course, this is largely, largely irrelevant since I already collected true Jedi status. By the way, you have to collect true Jedi status in story mode. No way around that. And I just remembered that there was something important I forgot to do. There is indeed a mini kit piece here, but in order to get it, we have to construct something. Completely slipped my mind. Wow, my memory is getting worse and worse as it speaks. You know, I used to have a really good memory when I was a kid, and then for some reason, it's steadily gotten worse and worse and worse. And I don't know why. All right, let's uh, get some more studs right here. And now we are ready to cross over to the other side because now that that vulture droid is parked, we can climb on top of it where we will access another mini kit piece. And we just need R2's help to unlock this panel. Now, obviously some of the mini kit pieces you have yet to collect might be spread far apart. The only reason I'm not cutting this footage is because this is a short level and they're all relatively, and they're all packed pretty close together. But in the case of longer levels, I will definitely cut some. All right, let's unlock this door, which will give us access to this room. Once again, you need to use the force on these panels to access the panel and use the droid to... The wrong droid. There we go. Wow, I cannot tell the difference between C-3PO and R2-D2. That's rather pathetic. Destroy these things just because I feel like it. And if you remember, there is a mini kit piece in this room. Jump up here, switch to a high jumper, and collect it. Very easily missed. All right, in this room... We are confronted by battle droids, and we have to get rid of them. Because if you try to use the force on an object while there are battle droids, or any enemies rather, in the room, they will attack. Now fortunately, we won't have to deal with those droid echoes. Let's get rid of you guys. Oh, wow, I forgot I was uh, I had a power sphere. Now this... Uh, mini kit piece is a little bit awkward. You need to get the big crate over, then move the tiny one, then move the second one, and finally the third. Once that is done, climb up and onto the platform. Oh, really? Come on, Maul. You can jump higher than that. All right. I don't know why that jump made it, but use the force on the lever in the distance. The platform will move and collect the mini kit piece. That mini kit piece can actually be collected in story mode. I just forgot about it. All right, just one last battle droid to take care of and we are golden. So we need to go up here and then we need to switch to an astromech droid 
and open the door and what is going on down there? It took you long enough to switch to a second character. All right. Snarkiness aside, in this room, there is a power brick. So what you have to do is you have to go onto this platform and then jump down and open this chamber and then do the same with the other one. Then step on both switches and presto, the power brick is ours. And that is everything in this level. So we're just going to return to the cantina. We have unlocked the super gonk and we collected a fair amount of studs. Furthermore, we have completed the mini kit. It's the Republic Cruiser. And once you collect, complete a mini kit, you get a whole lot of studs. This is another way to increase your bank account. And you also get a gold brick, which is very, very nice. So we are done here. And with episode one complete, or chapter one of episode one, I should say, we are going to move on to Invasion of Naboo. This time, hmm, who should I pick? I'm gonna go with uh, Kit Fisto, because he's awesome and he lives in the swamps. Now, contrary to the first episode, I actually collected quite a few mini kit pieces in here. So uh, this should be a lot shorter. Here's a mini kit piece right now. We need to use the rocks or the force on the rocks to stack them in a pile. And then there we need to hit that target on the tree. Presto, a mini kit piece. And that is our ninth one. And fortunately, I know where the 10th mini kit piece is. So I will see you guys momentarily. All right, so contrary to what I thought earlier, um, the mini kit piece is not here, but there is something else. Remember this uh, bounty hunter panel? Well, we have a bounty hunter now. So let's have Django give the signal and that wall will move up. However, it doesn't contain a mini kit piece, but the level's power brick. Awesome. All right, so we should be getting relatively close to uh, said mini kit piece. If those battle droids don't stop blasting me, of course. And man, we're already up to 50,000 studs. Once again, that's how valuable the times two score extra is. Yeah, I believe the next, yeah, the next mini kit piece is in this area. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, switch to Maul and create a pathway for us. That blue stud indicated a mini kit piece that was once there. Ah, here we are. So as soon as we get rid of these battle droids... Come on, dude, shoot me. There we go. All right, we need to switch to a tiny character, crawl through the hatch, and there we have it. All 10 mini kit pieces collected and the power brick collected as well. But before we exit out of the level, I'm gonna show you an extra section. See that shiny object there? Let's throw a thermal detonator on it and see what it contains. So this is kind of an extra area where you can get some more studs. Some blue studs. I believe in the original uh, Lego Star Wars, this uh, area contained a mini kit piece. Not so in the complete saga. So let's go ahead and switch over to R2, who will fly over to collect some studs and fly across again to find absolutely nothing. But there are uh, some studs in the uh, water right here. And there are quite a few, I must say. So this is just a stud mine. Well, we have 
collected everything we needed in uh, this level. So let's head back to the cantina. We have unlocked Poo Money. Yes, that is actually an extra. Some of the extras are really useful. Others are just plain silly. And with that, we have completed the mini kit piece. It was the Gungan Submarine. And another gold brick for good measure. So we have completed two mini kits and have collected two power bricks. I think now is a good time to stop this video. So next time on Let's Play Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, we are going to tie up more loose ends in episode one. See you guys next time. Hey, did you like what you saw? Then be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter for updates on my videos. Also, do you want to record LP videos like me? Then check out my kit page for my go-to equipment for recording.